All right, welcome back. We are here for the last lecture of the week. Uh, this one is on section 6.6 .6 and the law of cosines. And uh, as I was saying right at the end of the last video, this is a really, really nice result, really nice little uh, formula um, for planar geometry and planar trigonometry, which basically uh, generalizes the Pythagorean theorem. So if you'll remember, the Pythagorean theorem it says for any two for any triangle which is a right triangle if we have two legs a and b and a hypotenuse c there's a relationship between their lengths and specifically it's a squared plus b squared is c squared the law of cosines is going to take this simple situation and it's going to say hey you know, can we still make a formula like this when we don't have this right angle? So, maybe we can find out. Maybe we can see uh, if there is such a thing, sort of experimentally here. I'll sort of tuck this off to the side. The question is, can this work for something that's not a right triangle? So let's let's sort of break the bank here. Let's do it. So this is just a generic triangle. I, I don't know. This is side A. This is side B. This is side C. So this is going to be angle B. This is going to be angle A. And this is angle C. So here we go. What do we know? Um, well, first, let's do this. Let's make this uh, the origin. Zero zero. Is that okay? Is that fine? I think that's fine. So what are what are these other points? Well this this one is negative a zero. What's this point here? This would be oh boy get out your trig hats. So this nice light color here turns out is up at the top of this little triangle here, isn't it? So what are the coordinates? So this is some angle here. And what is that angle? That's 180 minus angle C, isn't it? Okay, so if I took B times the cosine of that angle, I would get the x coordinate, wouldn't I? Right? Cosine of this angle tells you the x coordinate on the unit circle, and then if you scale that by the hypotenuse, you get the x coordinate in general. Likewise, if I know the angle, which is 180 minus c, the y coordinate is b times the sine of 180 degrees minus c. And that tells us the coordinates, but that is something that we, I think, can simplify, can't we? Right? So let's do that. B, B, what do we know about cosines and sines for some given angle and their relationship to 180 minus that angle? So I've drawn the x-axis here. So we know our angle here is going to be acute, right? At least in this picture. It's the same reasoning if we have an obtuse angle uh, and c is acute. So this is the case that we've drawn here. And uh, the same, same thing can be said if I draw it the other way with c being right or obtuse. So this is angle 180 minus c. And then angle C, oops, try and draw this exactly as best I can. I'm kind of suggesting something here by the way in which I'm constructing it. 
um, but I'll delete this line. That's just helping me construct it. This is angle C. Okay. Um, what can you tell me about the y coordinates first off? Well, the y coordinates are the same. So this is the same as b sine of c. Okay. And what can you tell me about their x coordinates? Well, they're equal, but they're opposite, aren't they? So this this is kind of an interesting thing because we know this is a positive coordinate. Right? So I'm going to write a negative sign here. <laughs> but the reason I'm writing that negative sign is because the cosine of this angle is negative cosine of C is negative because it's obtuse as I've drawn it. So this negative sign is actually canceling out that negative cosine. Right? Now in the case of an acute angle C, so our triangle looks like this. Acute angle C. We need a negative x coordinate, but this angle is less than 90, which means the cosine is positive. So cosine of c is positive and this negative sign takes care of the negative sign for us. So that is pretty handy, isn't it? So this is our current situation. We know a triangle. We know three points of it uh, on the plane. And what do we know in particular about this triangle overall? Well, it's a right triangle and we know then that this is satisfied. So let's do this. Let's take A plus negative B cosine of C. That's this bottom length, right? The x coordinate here is negative B times cosine C, and this side is A. So if we add this length plus this length, um, remembering a is negative. Um, if we square that, if we add this to the height of this triangle, which is b sine c, and we square that, what are we going to get? We're going to get c squared, little c squared. Right? Okay, so as it turns out, um, did I make a mistake here for, I think, we take this value and we subtract negative a, that gives us plus c, yeah, so we're okay here. Um, it turns out if we square everything out here, what do we get? We get b squared sine squared c, square this out, this one would, would take a little bit of foiling, what do we get? We get um, b squared cosine squared of C, we get A squared, we get minus 2AB cosine square, uh, cosine C plus this. Well, what do we know in addition? We can factor out this B squared, and it gives us cosine squared of C plus sine squared of C. And that we know for sure is equal to 1 always. That's just the Pythagorean theorem for uh, cosine squared plus sine squared uh, equals 1. Um, so this simplifies down to this. a squared, if we think about what's left, a squared plus b squared times 1, so b squared, minus 2ab cosine of c is equal to c squared. If we think about what we've got here, if I erase this unnecessary information now, if you need to see all that worked out again, you can rewatch the video portion. What we've got here is a really handy formula.
which looks a lot like the Pythagorean theorem with some small modification. So we know this angle C is not a right triangle. So this angle C is uh, this angle C is not a 90 degree angle, is what I meant to say. Um, this is not a right triangle. It could be if C is 90, cosine is 0, so this drops out entirely and we get A squared plus B squared equals C squared. But if this is not a right triangle, this formula still holds. Nothing that we did in that, in that solving process before was, was erroneous. Nothing was wrong with what we did. So this is a nice little formula which tells you exactly uh, a relationship between that angle C, whether or not it's right, um, or 90 degrees, uh, it tells you the relationship between all three side lengths and that angle C. And there's equivalent statements depending on which angles you have. And here's the basic idea. So you pick some side lengths. So I'll go with A squared. The basic idea is you add the squares of the other two side lengths, so A squared plus C squared. You subtract twice the product of those, and then you multiply by the cosine of the opposite angle to the side you chose over here. So always the other two side lengths squared and added, subtract twice the product of those guys, and then you take the cosine of A, or the cosine of the associated angle for this choice here. So for B, what's that look like? It's B squared, we're gonna have cosine of B here. Okay, we're gonna have the other two side lengths squared and added together, and then multiplied by each other here. These are the three sort of uh, law of cosine rules. Okay, and uh, these are the three Pythagorean theorem, uh, I guess, um, on steroids examples uh, that we've got. So I'll slide this up and over. And these are really handy, really, really handy for finding. Um, solutions to other problems that perhaps before would have been impossible to solve for. So uh, in the previous example I went through you know different types of triangles, different minimum sets of information that you know about triangles. Um, so let's let's go with one here. Um, just a just a quick basic example how to use this. And so this is an example about the side angle side triangle. So we know one side, we know the another side and we know the angle between them. So this would be like knowing A, C, and B in this in this triangle. Side A, angle B, side B. Or this would be like knowing side C, angle A, side B. Or side C, angle B, side A. So it's just in that order, side, an angle, and a side. Um, so here's a nice little example of it. Um, So we'll just do this one, I suppose. Um, so let's say we know angle A angle A is 46.5 degrees. So we'll throw that one over here. It looks pretty close to that. Uh, side B, that's the opposite to angle B, so not the opposite side to this one, is 10.5. So we'll make that one this one. And angle, side C is 18.0. And in this question, we're being asked to find uh, the opposite side length. Um, and the easy solution here is just to use the law of cosines. So I'm going to do this with an x, and that's obviously not one of these. The reason I'm doing that is because these are sort of your, your a la carte choices. This is your buffet of law of cosines. Okay, and you just need to sort of remember the form of it and how it's put together as opposed to just being given a triangle with correctly labeled sides, A, B, and C, and correctly labeled angles, A, B, and C. It's more important to remember uh, the form of it and what it's, how it's constructed. So I'm going to label this X so that I don't suggest which a la, carte, a la carte choice you make. So law of cosines says there's a relationship between these three side lengths, x, 10.5, 18.0, and this angle, 46.5. So 
this angle is opposite this side length. So in the law of cosines, what you have is that side length squared is equal to something here, and there's going to be a cosine of the opposite angle in there. That's the first thing to remember, that no matter what uh, law of cosines you're going to choose, the relationship is always the same, that the cosine of the angle and the solitary thing you choose here on the left side of the equal sign, those are always paired, they're opposites. So cosine C, side C, cosine A, side A, cosine B, side B. These things were always written that way to represent a side and the angle opposite it. So that's, that's what I've written down here. So now we need to just fill in the rest of the information. What are the two things that are added together? Those are the squares of the other side lengths. So 10.5 squared plus 18 squared. Okay, that's, that's essentially the Pythagorean theorem right there, right? But that doesn't work if we don't have a right triangle. Okay, and then what's the other little piece of the law of cosines? Well, it's always a minus two. That never changes. And what the other piece is right here is this minus two and this cosine of 46.5 that's multiplied by the product of these two guys, not squared. So times 10.5 times 18. Okay. So how do we find x? We just square root this guy, and we've got it. That's going to be plus or minus, right? But uh, yeah, you can you can you can sort of orient this triangle however you want in the unit in the plane, and then you can choose appropriately what that sign is. Um, as I've drawn it, this triangle is not in any sort of standard form. Uh, so for this, at this point in time, I would just give the positive with the understanding that it could be negative if I'm treating it as a coordinate. Um, but if I'm treating it as just a length, I would choose the positive. Okay, uh, And that's it. That's how you would use the law of cosines. So this is another tool in your bag, just like the law of sines. For solving for uh, certain elements of a triangle that you don't know, uh, but where you do know other pieces of information about the triangle. Okay, so this is this is another one of those tools for having a minimal set of information about something, and using that amount of information to solve everything else that you can know. Okay, specifically here applied to triangles. And I think I gave you in the last last section a really good example of knowing distances to, to far off objects that you can't possibly go to in any reasonable manner, um, finding distances in that way. Um, so that's it. Uh, that's section 6.6 .6 is the law of cosines. Uh, I, I know I only did one example, but I spent a lot of time f you know, figuring it out with you. Um, so if you followed that and if you understood the example, then I'd say you're in great shape. Um, uh, to work on the problems and uh, I will work on more problems on Wednesday in class but for now I hope that's enough and I will see you in class or on office in office hours tomorrow on Wednesday uh, until then uh, you take it easy and I'll see you later